everybody. Welcome back to Reaper Pro Tips. This is your host, Anne, and there is disembodied voice Justin. Also, we are back. <laughs> and I'm off kilter. There I am. Now I'm on kilter. There. Or whatever kilter means. Um, so yeah, hey, my back feels better. My neck has this horrible crick right here, but that's because I probably computered too much. Um, so yeah, so we're gonna we're gonna get through today and uh, yay, we should be back to normal. Huzzah. Thank you for inquiring, Outer Mama. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, the weekend was good. I rested. I did a lot of stretching. Uh, David and I did a really low-key yoga stretches. Um, for those who have never had back injury, it actually does help to move uh, rather than just lie in bed. Lying in bed can just prolong the pain. Um, so I did like do a lot of like sitting with my back support pillow, but I also did a lot of stretching um, and PT. So yeah, having been through this rodeo before, I, I do know how to deal with it, which is good, right? That's the good thing is I have the tools. Um, so yeah, my back feels much, 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 much better. Although my neck, like I said, my, my neck and shoulder, my computer, my mousing hand, right? Have you ever had this, the mousing hand where this muscle just wants to like, just go something like that? Yeah. I like that. So good morning. Yes, it's all good. Um, and, uh, oh yeah, no problem. Cool pack. Yeah. I need to do, I need to just do a video. Like I should do a video up for free on my Patreon. Coolpack emailed me because he's a new patron, guys, and asked about the difference between MSP core bones and HD and all that stuff. Yeah. So I think I'll just shoot a short video, put it up for free on my Patreon, and then whenever somebody asks that question, I can say, you should go over and watch this video. Because <laughs> it's not a hard explanation. It just takes up time, right? And and it, and although I've discussed it so many times before, in more than 100 videos, I cannot remember where I discussed it, right? So, so yeah. So it's like that. Yeah. So yeah, so I'm going to be like, I'm kind of be messing around with my posture today just to make sure that I feel good and we're all happy. One thing I did get done, I'm going to put Justin in my ear one moment. Um, but one thing I'm so happy that I got done with this weekend because I couldn't do anything else <laughs> was that I cleaned the office and reorganized it. So like I, I revamped my paint tray, guys. I can like see everything now and find things and... Uh, I probably should move the olives over towards something else, though. The olives are way back. But yes. But my paint drawers are all organized. There's room in it. There is nothing on the floor in here. I was able to vacuum it. Like, I moved... We reset up my computer. My gaming computer. Because it used to be over here on my bookshelf. And it was just like... That's part of what was messing with my back, was my positioning. I wasn't at a proper desk. So, David and I cleaned off our photo pad and put a table on the end of our desks and... Uh, Essentially, now I have a real computer set up. Justin is a little big to fit in my ear, but when you make him tiny and purple, it works. <laughs> That's all I can say. Just, just I'm going to leave you with that mental image. <laughs> but yeah, so like... Uh, <laughs> when I turned around, yeah. I, well, when I, when I was... When my back... When your back is hurt, you should never twist at the spine, right? So I can like look down and get my paint now, like pretty much without going backwards, right? Which is, although once we've got our colors, we're going to be good. So you guys should be excited because um, I actually did, one of the things I did is I went through my whole paint collection and I took out some colors that you, those of you who watch me know that I keep a drawer here of about 180, maybe 80, about 86, between 75 and 85, 90 paints that I use a lot. And, uh, and so what I did is I went through those paints, evaluated them, put other paints in there, removed some paints I hadn't looked at so that essentially I should be switching it up a little bit with you guys as far as what colors we use. So this will, this will give us an opportunity to explore a few. Now we may have to pick some miniatures and specifically choose to use those colors in order to, you know, do it instead of just defaulting. But, um, I have a slightly different array now. Yeah, it's, uh, I mean, I, some things, a lot of things stayed the same because there are definitely colors I reach for, but I did find like, uh, 9002 deep red is one of my favorite reds. And I mention it all the time, but I didn't have it in my drawer. Now it's in my drawer, you know, and like 9010 pine green, which is like the best basic warm, dark green we have, you know, things like that are, are now happily in my drawer. Um, and I don't know, I tossed in a couple other things. So essentially when we run into a weird color, we're just going to use it. Um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you might already have them, Kurniko. Um, some of them are just obs, just obvious. Uh, like I said, the, the deep red and the, um, the pine green are two of my, like, old favorites. So let's go, without further ado, um, let us, uh, go and try to put some paint on something and see how our back feels. Ha ha. 
Now, my, my challenge today is to stay upright in the spine. Uh, they used to be all tossed, but uh, tossed in randomly and roughly in groups, Crowley. So, like, uh, in the drawer, I just had, I had a couple of partitions, but I mostly, they were just, like, kind of the blues were all lying in a heap together. Now they're all happily um, sitting on their bottoms, so their tops are up. Um, and I can still, I'm at an angle, and there's enough room that I can still see all the colors, so I can, I should be able to find colors really easily. Um... So not, I never do bottom up. Okay, Crowley, actually that, that makes a really good point here. Don't do bottom up with dropper bottles for prolonged periods of time. Um, and, this, and this depends. If you use the colors a lot, it's not going to hurt anything. But remember how I mentioned how paint settles out, like over time, how the resins go down? Well, all those resins are building up now down toward your nozzle. So you're more likely to, to end up with clogs if you do that. So if you're going to store your paints bottom up, so that you can see the color. That's fine, but make sure that you are shaking them regularly in that case. Uh, if there are paints that you have that you don't touch for two years, I would say don't store them bottom up um, because then if a clog is going to form, if there's going to be like anything like that, it's going to clog in the worst possible part. <laughs> um, that's always what I was taught about dropper bottles um, and my personal experience. Uh, it's much easier to get paint in solution if you've got a lot of like air and fluid. I don't know. It's just it, it basic thing is if you're not using the paint a lot, don't store it bottom up, store it sideways or whatever. Um, but anyway, yeah, before they were all mostly sideways. Now they're all top up and you shouldn't, I mean, other than seeing color, you shouldn't ever have to store them bottom up. I mean it, because unlike with, uh, unlike with paint pots, <clears throat> Games Workshop, uh, <laughs> with a paint pot, what happens is you've got a big air seal here and you've got a big air seal here on the flip top. So essentially you've got at least one big air seal here and a lot of air can leak into that, you know, as compared to the air that leaches through plastic because that, that happens. Air does slowly make its way through the plastic bottle, um, which is why even the best sealed paints will eventually dry out and gum up. Um, yeah, yeah, we're here, Cranston. We're here. We're doing it. Um, yeah, exactly. Cool pack. See, it makes a mess. Exactly. Um, sides fine. Yeah. Wall mounts fine. It may, side may actually be the best. Um, but this way I can fit more paint in here because my drawer is just deep enough to hold an upright paint. I didn't plan that. It just turned out. Um, but yeah, so with a, with a jar like this, you've got at least one huge aperture and you've got no barrier in there. It's just the one cap. Whereas with a dropper bottle, you have two, right? You've got You've got your inner seal here, which only has a tiny little hole here and a much smaller opening through here, right? So it's not letting as much air through. And then in addition, you're screwing on a cap, which gives you an additional layer of seal against air loss. And that's why dropper bottles uh, last longer than paint pots. That and the fact that when you open the paint pot, you're directly exposing the paint to air, which is in here, you're only squeezing out the, much, the amount you need. So you're only exposing a tiny bit of your paint to air. So if you think about it, it makes a lot of sense why this trumps this when it comes to paint life, right? So, so yeah, so in, but with, but if you do have pots like this old, old, old games workshop, this is like, I think the best color they ever did. Like, I still use this metallic. I think I have four bottles of it from back in the day. Um, and uh, I always store them upside down. Because with this, what you need is you need the fluid to all fall down and create a seal. If your fluid is down here, then you're blocking off, directly blocking off air from coming in, fresh air from coming in. So the paint will last a lot longer on a paint pot if you store it upside down. But you don't want to do that generally with droppers. Does that make sense? Yeah, I mean, I do do that. I do have, I do, I used to dot all my paints, but um, I find that, honestly, I can tell, like, if you guys could see this, essentially the angle that paints are in the drawer, like, I can see it like this. And that's enough for me to see this color. And because I've only got, like, 80 paints in here, it's not too hard for me to locate colors because I don't have a lot of colors that are all the same. Now, I did put more partitions in here now, and... Um, and I do have a lot of darker reds, so I'll probably have to hunt a little bit, but not too bad. Hey, Rex, how's it going? Yeah, yeah, well, that works, VCR, right? As <laughs> Maybe half a pot left, huh, Jedi Jared? Yeah, see, wasn't, weren't these great? I'm sure that they're in a toxic pace, but, but I don't care. 
um but uh but yeah so this uh that was a good i think the closest thing to this is um vallejo model air chrome um as far as just like the particular type of flake and uh the the fluidity and just the general coverage but but yeah so only 80 paints well considering though that that's what i use for the bulk of my painting and actually i wanted to talk about something else to you guys something that i brought up to a coachy um this weekend I couldn't, I couldn't film videos, so I couldn't work on that part of my Patreon, but I could write out PDFs, so I caught up on a lot in there. Um, so, uh, and speaking of Val, so Val, I'm about to share the thing that I shared with you. Um, so, okay guys, so when you're mixing colors, when you are trying to mix a color, try to make your mid-tone, whatever your middle color is, make that out of the bottle. And then if you're going to mix a lot, mix shadows for it and mix highlights for it. Instead of starting with a dark color that you mix, and then you have to create a mid-tone for it that you mix. And then you, you, you want to minimize your amount of mixing and you always want a common point to go back to. You can also just make it your highlight color and add, add colors to make it, to give it two shadow colors, right? This is assuming you're creating a triad, but but you, you want to kind of, you can get into trouble so hard. Like that's when people like get frustrated with mixing is when you mix a color to start with, and then you have to figure out how to mix a highlight and a shadow for it. Um, and then that frustrates them. Whereas if you are always have like a middle color to go back to, it's like when I'm mixing skin tones and I start with tan skin all the time, that means I always have my tan skin to help layer, you know, blend in layers or do a glaze or whatever. And it's right out of the bottle. It's just convenient. And it's why I still have a bunch of these weird colors, even though I could take clear brights and I do on vacation and just mix everything. Like I could do that, but let's face it. It's a pain in the butt when you have to like create a new puddle of color. That's your highlight that you're creating from your mixed midtone, you know? So just to make it easier on yourself, just make sure at least one bottle is out of the, out of one color is out of the bottle and then worry about your highlights and shading or whatever, whatever, you know, you're missing. Um, Usually I would just, I would just aim for the mid-tone because it makes sense. Um, the other thing, uh, honestly, is that a lot of mid-tone colors are very easy to work with as far as like layering and transparency. They're kind of middle of the road. They're not super opaque and they're not super transparent. And so that, it makes a lot of sense to start with your mid-tone then and go up and down because then that middle color is, is going to be easier to work with. You won't have to worry about adding a ton of water to it. You won't have to worry about it being too see-through. It's going to be kind of a nice middle of the road color. So there's some explanation to start you off. Boom. Paint explanation. <laughs> hey, Neural. Thanks for the sub. 15 months. Um, it was they, when they remade. Yeah, they remade the iteration b before this one, uh, Jetta. Because that was the one that they, I suspect they remade their iteration that they originally made for GW because they, uh, they were making, I actually have examples of their line for GW, but I put them away. So all my paints is now, my extra paint is put away nicely organized in the closet. I, I, I organize so much. I'm so happy. It's so clean back here. I have room. I don't have a chair next to me anymore to hold stuff. It's fantastic. Um, but yeah. Right, exactly. See, Royal Llama? See, and I realized this when I was working with my, my mentor and, and talked about it. It's like, it's going to make it so much easier on yourself to just go with the bottle paint. And and like I said, that's why I still have, even though I could mix everything from scratch, it's why I still regularly reach for a pretty color that I like instead of just mixing that color. It's like, that way I've got it consistent. Plus, then it gives you a consistent color to add when you're, when you're mixing those highlights and shadows, you can just add a few drops of that. You don't have to like say, if I was trying to mix a light teal, I don't have to add, okay, a little bit of this and a little bit of white and a little bit of blue to highlight it and then more white. Instead, I can just say, okay, I'm gonna just add two drops of marine teal and then one drop of white, boom. So make it easy, keep it simple if you're gonna, and, and keeping it simple like that just helps you get confidence with mixing. So yeah. Hey, HM Road Dog, you just missed me going off on like how to store your paint and um, mixing. So we haven't actually put paint on anybody yet. But that is why I'm starting here with, for the most part, um, I'm starting with midtone working up and down. But anyway, we're going to mix some blonde hair today. Hey, Xanifer, how's it going? And Dog Father.
Yeah, the Vortex is like the gold standard. I don't know. Nail polish shakers, yeah, your mileage may vary. If you, if it's a paint that's already you use a lot and it's already well mixed, you're probably fine. It's when a paint has been sitting around for a while or when you just get it fresh and you don't know how long it's been on the shelf, that's when you can get into uh, a little bit like, hey, Vekaroha, thank you for the tiny raid. Tiny raid, I will do. It's so cute. Ah, good morning, Agent Marvel. Tad late in January, yeah, yeah. Oh boy yeah reaper challenge league go out do that thing it looks fine it looks like a fine time as my mother used to say uh yeah 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 i was good to my back this weekend i did some stretchies and yogas and physical therapy every night and ta -da! i still shouldn't twist a lot but you know it is what it is all right so yeah let's look at hair let's look at hair first i think i want um, to kind of block in my NMM gold, which is going to be all in the, the jewelry, but I do, I'm going to block that in with the shadow because I want it to go a little darker. Uh, and I think this is like the layout that I'm going to use though. I wasn't sold on the green at first on all those spots, but now I kind of am. So I'm going to get this in focus and I think she's at a good distance as I work with my new setup here. Cause I also cleaned off my entire desk and cleaned it. And now I have to like resituate things because I don't have a chair to put my crap on anymore. Uh, and I need to make sure my water isn't going to get knocked over every time I reach to adjust the camera. <laughs> ah, adaptation. All right. There. Excellent. No, none of that either. Thank you. Yeah, exactly. Keep your back straight. Try not to twist your spine. Yeah, that's that's all the, the things. The things that... Da, da, da. Yeah, I seriously, like I put my back out for serious uh, a few years ago and needed about six weeks of physical therapy. So that pretty much taught me all of the good rules for what to do to your back after it has a spasm. Um, although at the time I felt my back was dislocated, but obviously it just feels like that, right? All right, so now I need to go and get my colors. So I'm going to turn and not twist. It's going to be a good Anne. Here, I wish I could... I wish I could show you guys my happy little organized drawer. It has so much room. Like, I could add so much paint to this. I honestly feel like 30, 40, 50, 60, 70. Yeah, I'm going to say about 85 paints. 85 to 90. Quick quick count. Uh, Otter Mama, what I've found helps with my back is actually switching back and forth. So for part of the day, I do the kneeling chair here. I have a different sort of kneeling chair that's a little bit higher for my computer desk because height matters. When you're painting... You want the model to be at your face level or, or very close to it um, so that you can keep a straight back, right? A same thing for the computer desk. You want to be up a little higher, right? So I have another kneeling chair for that. And then I sit in regular chair with like a little back support pillow. Um, and I, I swap it up in short. And I found that that really helps. And then I spend a lot of time standing. Like I've org I've, I have a box so I can do a standing desk at the counter in the kitchen. Um, and I try to do that for part of the day. And I find that that is absolutely the best conditioning for my back is swapping those back and forth. So, and, and hey, I don't mind talking about like back pain and, and helping with your back to the, because you're mini painters, right? You need this, you need this information. Um, yeah, Otter Mama, I would say switch, it's a nice switch around. And the one I got from Amazon, or actually it was David's, David ordered a metal one that he didn't like that was too low for him, but it's perfect for me at my, at my painting desk. So do be aware kneeling chairs have various heights and some are adjustable and some aren't. So when you're looking at them, um, keep in mind that the cool wooden Norwegian ones, which are a little more expensive, I have one of those for my computer desk, but they're not adjustable. So if you need it to serve more than one purpose, get an adjustable one. Yeah, that's part of it. I do bridges every night for my um, physical therapy program, Valendar. And then of course, in yoga, we're doing downward dogs and bridges uh, here and there. So, but yeah, yeah, I would say. Cool. I'm just catching up. All right, good. So let's let's mix a blonde hair or something. Turn. Uh, what do we want to do? Let's let's use our. You know, I do love Pathfinder colors. So your basic rule, guys, when you are and where is my? Oh, that's a metallic. How did that get in there? You have your own bag, metallic. So all right. Let's talk about blonde hair. Let's talk about mixing it. Let's talk about all the problems that people run into because they do it wrong. <laughs> so let's get that and I want my rich leather that's my polished leather that's not very good rich leather there we go although we could use polished leather for this also 
Yeah, yeah, you could. You could. It's probably going to be brighter, though. I think not. All right. So the main problem that people have when they are um, doing blonde hair is they make it too yellow. Uh, if you look at blonde hair in nature, it's actually really, really, it has a lot of brown in it. Sometimes, uh, often, it has even a touch of red in it, so or orange. So if you find a photo is your best best option. Even if it's an out-of-the-bottle blonde, it'll still follow these rules in general. Um, yeah, blonde equals a pale brown, right? Or, or even when it's really light, it equals a cream. Um, so that's, uh, you know, that's, that's what you want. So because of that, you do want a little bit of yellow in it usually because, you know, a lot of people want that rich golden color. Uh, you see it in pinup art. Like they totally went to, they tent went way in the yellow spectrum for pinup art. And you can do that if you're doing a very cartoony figure. But even in those paintings, if you go look at them, they're using like some serious reddish and brownish tones for the shadows and they're going pretty dark with it. So a second mistake, first mistake is making it too yellow. Second mistake is not making your shadows dark enough. Um, and, and so we're going to address these things today when we make some color for our, some hair color for our girl. So usually when you start with blonde hair, what you want to start with is an ochre color. So you could start, well, if you, if you know the basic um, colors master series, tanned leather, which is 9031, and then amber gold and golden blonde, right? So you could technically take your golden blonde, which is 9033, and shade it with 9031, and you'd be in the ballpark of a pretty good blonde hair color. Just highlight with white, you're done. Um, one second. Doo -doo -doo. Oh, yeah, don't worry about confidence issues. With RCL is just for fun, dog father. In fact, RCL is a great way, if you do have confidence issues, it's a great way to get your stuff out there and, and break that fear barrier. Um, the other one is if you, if you, uh, are part of a Patreon with a private discord, uh, like mine, for example, I don't remember if you are, if you are a patron, my discord is so friendly. We're so friendly, like, and it's a smaller community. So sometimes that can be less intimidating than doing something bigger. So, you know, your mileage may vary, but, but, you know, figure it out. You can, you can figure it out. I know you can just put yourself out there. What's okay. What's the worst thing that could happen? Somebody doesn't like your miniature. Then what? You well, I'll keep painting. All right. <laughs> You know, ah, uh, yeah, I understand that, Otter Mama. Otter Mama. It's kind of like, like I'm very social. I come off as very social until David says, "Well, you should just find a group for that wild quest." And then I'm like, "No, <laughs> turtle. <laughs> I don't want to talk to strangers." <laughs> oh dear. Loves golden blonde for everything except hair. You can, you can do that, Valandar the Red, and you're very red. Um, so obviously, you meant to emphasize that. Golden blonde does work for hair. It is a little bit yellow. It is a little bit light. You do have to shade it to make it work. But yeah, it does. It does work. Promise. Promise it works. Then there's the blonde hair triad. If you want training wheels, <laughs> blonde hair triad is is very a uh, very muted blonde. It's a very natural blonde. So what a lot of painters that I know you do is they will put a glaze of yellow, either marigold, saffron sunset, or lantern, over the top at the end. And I believe when I did my blonde hair PDF for the Patreon that I did do a yellow glaze over the top. Um, so it's, doo -doo 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 -doo. oh, I like that, that 365 challenge. That is pretty cool. Sorry. Getting distracted by chat. Good morning, dragon. Yeah. We are mixing blonde. Yeah. We're mixing blonde and we're talking about blonde, uh, today. Um, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you can push up toward taupe with that. That makes sense. Because you're adding, a, essentially you're adding an ochre with a bit of brown to it. So you're you're adding an earth tone, earth tone pigment, which tends to work better than adding straight yellow. Um, a golden blonde is mostly made with, with ochre. I think that's the only yellow in it. I don't think it has another yellow in it. I could be wrong on that. But if it does, then it has a tiny bit of other yellow in it. Um, but yeah, it's a, but it, because it is so light, any, it's just like me using Osterian sand here, right? It's just, it's a, it can make a good highlight color for so many different things. And I cannot plug this color enough for that reason. This is like, it's like a yellower, creamy ivory. Like, I really like this color for building highlights, guys. If any warm color from oranges to greens and to browns, like, I like all of it with this color so this i actually wanted a color like this in the line and i just hadn't gotten around to it when pathfinder came up and then when i saw this color i was like yes this and karen stone like those are the two colors i always wanted in my line that i never was able to put in until pathfinder so so do that thing 
Um, yeah, you could do a mini a day, but you know what, guys? D mini a day, just so you know, diminishing returns. Mini a day will get you to, to done things, but it won't get you to done things that look amazing, right? So, so if you just need that, I need to done things, if I need to get things done and that'll make me feel better, then do that. Then absolutely do it, mini a day. But if you're like me, you take, if you're like me and I take the greatest pleasure in having something that looks nice, that, that I enjoy and that looks nice in my mind, even my gaming models, I want them to look nice, look neat, right? Then mini a day really just puts a lot of pressure on me. Um, and I don't like it. So it's, it's all what your goal is. Always look at these challenges and say, what is my goal? Like Rhonda just said in her blog this last month or this month, you know, what's your goal with a mini painting? Are you just wanting to get stuff done for the table? Are you wanting to learn to paint faster? Are you wanting to learn to paint neater? Are you wanting to learn to new techniques? Are you wanting to get silver at ReaperCon next year? Right? All this kind of thing. Uh, no, nothing is like this. Nothing is like this, Valandar. Sorry, every once in a while, I'm going to actually bring up a paint you don't already own. You may have to order it. <laughs> ah, I do like a lot of these weird Pathfinder colors. I really, really do. This is more yellow. It's more yellow. Uh, Bethalian chitin's more a biscotti, kind of a brown. And the bone color uh, has umber in it. So it's going to go the other way. Um, but Osirian sand is, is an off yellow. So it's a very interesting color. I grabbed it because it is currently the lightest yellow I have in my caddy, and really I don't feel I need anything else. If I want to keep my yellow more saturated, I'll just add pure white to one of these guys. But when I want to mute out my highlight just a little bit, or I'm mute, working with muted uh, yellows otherwise, I'll, uh, I'll grab this guy. Um, desert stone is much browner, or sand. Desert sand is much browner. Where is it? Much browner. In fact, you can use Assyrian sand as a highlight for desert stone or desert sand, and it works fantastic. So it really is an off-white. It's similar. Again, here's creamy ivory versus Osirian sand with Osirian sand here. Creamy ivory, much browner. Much ha has a hint, it has umber in it, so it goes more gray. This this is more of a pure um, highlight. So yeah, so Osirian sand, really unique color. Pale yellow, good for highlighting a whole bunch of things. And, and like I said, a great sand color. So if you're using desert sand and you want to highlight for it, this right out of the bottle, this works great. I've also used this to highlight static grass if I'm using the burnt grass color where it's kind of dead. Um, this makes a great kind of dried out and strand color for it. So I just dry brush it over the top. I like to do, I like to dry brush my, um, my static grass so that it doesn't look shiny. Because uh, I hate the, the synthetic shininess of it normally, so I will actually dry brush a couple of different colors, usually lightly over the top of it to kill that and to give it more dimension. Uh, and I use this color a lot for that. Oh boy. Yeah, 30 minutes. Well, hey, this is me catching up. <laughs> when, you, when you don't have Anne for like two days, you know, then Anne just kind of... What happens, guys, is that I get all this rest and then I explode. <laughs> I've just been building up paint pressure. Boom. Um, but yeah, so do, do, do. And Cairn Stone is just that interesting. Cairn Stone is for, you know, that yellowish kind of granite color, like the, the, um, kind of a yellowy gray. It's a weird rock color, but you see it all over the place, especially in the Midwest. That's Cairn Stone. So it's a, it's a really good alternative stone color. You shade it with a gray. You can even shade it probably with mixing in a little desert sand, um, or desert, desert stone rather, and then highlight it up with like an off white or an off gray white. And it should be great. Yeah, sandstone's a little more yellow. I'm thinking about those grayish, yellowish granite rocks or the chalk rocks. Like, you know how you get chalk rocks where there are a lot of yellow oxide, but then you also get the rocks that are kind of a mix of granite and chalk rock. <laughs> chalk rocks is what we called them as a kid. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, it's kind of like that. It's, 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 a, um, it's a gray stone that gets a bit of, uh, of oxide, iron oxide in it. And it's common in nature. So, you know. Anyway, stuff like that. Let's actually mix some hair. So I will always start with an ochre. In this case, we'll just start with the ochre of all ochres, Palomino Gold. I am going to somewhat violate what I just uh, told you guys to do, but we're going to go the other way. So what I just said earlier today is that if you're going to mix, start with one color and then go up and down. You can also, however, do it the other way, meaning that you can mix your main, but then only add one color for highlights and shadows. So like one, say, say I mix my main color, I could choose just to add pure white for highlights. I could choose just to add rich leather for shadows, you know, or I could add 
Harvest Brown for Shadows. And in that way, although my, my main is a mix, it just means I better mix up extra of my main so that I can split it off and make those shadows and highlights. But you want to keep it simple with don't mix a whole bunch of colors into your shadow and into your midtone and into your highlight. Don't do it. Keep it simple. All right. So we're going to go first with Palomino. And Palomino tends to be quite yellow, even though it is, uh, it's a yellow ochre. That's what its, uh, its color is. So we're actually, and since I'm using this for a mid-tone, I could mix up a lot of it. Um, she, her hair is so tiny though. So I'll probably just do, I'll start with six drops of this. And this alone over a white looks really yellow. Like it looks a bit mustardy here, but when you put it over a white base coat, it goes very bright. This is why this color is a great base coat for yellow. If you're painting something yellow, starting with Palomino Gold or another heavy ochre color will give you a fairly vibrant, darker yellow to start with. And it covers great because it's an oxide. Any of the yellow uh, or brown earth pigments or red tend to have very high coverage. So um, those who watched my latest Patreon video on coverage on red, orange, and yellow will, might remember that I said that oxide colors have great coverage. They are a higher pigment grind, so they are a more effective tool to do that. And that's why putting down this before you paint something yellow can be very, very helpful. <clears throat> oh, it's the fear buying, the Ed-induced ed fear buying. Yeah, right. <laughs> Sweet. All right, so we start with this color, but we decide, well, that looks really yellow. Now, get, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to talk a little bit about like what your goal is here again, right? All right, she's very cartoony. Look at these bright candy colors. Technically, if I wanted to go really yellow with her hair, this is the model to do it on because she's got all these jewel tones. So I could get away with it if I wanted to, but then I have to ask myself about all this gold. Like there's gold, these little dark things on her waist and the thing on her elbow and her bracelets, all that stuff. And even right next to her hair, that's the key one right there. This little circle that's going to be NMM gold right next to her hair. So I have to keep in mind that I'm going to have gold already. And what that's going to make me do is either push my hair color darker or lighter, depending on the gold. I know the gold is going to end up kind of a range in the middle. Um, so I need to go darker light. If we went dark, then we'd be making her a brunette or we could go really light blonde. So we're going to go light blonde and we're going to try to get away from our colors that we're going to use for the gold. So this is where these two shadow colors come in. So rich leather is the color that I'm going to use for my gold element base, which means that when it comes to, uh, shading our hair, I don't want to use this color. It's going to be too close. It's going to be the same thing. It's essentially going to mean the gold blends into the hair. So I have another option with, uh, with gold and that is to, or with blonde hair, and that is to take it more brown. So, and more orangey. So I'm essentially reaching for harvest brown and we're going to see what we can mix to see if we can make this work. Um, Targaryen blonde is a, is kind of a fake blonde. Well, they're, they're like the Swedish blonde, like the, the Scandinavian Norwegian blonde where it's so blonde because it's been, you know, they've been, they've been blonde to blonde has been breeding a lot. And so that's where you get that really, really pale blonde. Um, but, uh, yeah, Targaryen blonde, I can tell you having just painted three Targaryens is a murderous beast to try to nail guys. Light blonde is actually really difficult because you fight, kind of fight on your, in your subconscious mind against shading it enough and making it look right. Um, so I did the Targaryens. They're a little bit more yellow blonde probably than they are on TV, but that's the way it rolls. Uh, technically Daenerys has silver, Daenerys has silver hair anyway, like Gurm says so. So she's just so pale blonde that it actually looks silver. Which is, which is from inbreeding and actually based on genetics. <laughs> but nobody wants to talk genetics today. So, but yeah, the challenge with Targaryen Blonde is figuring out what to shade it with, Chibi. When you're doing a pale blonde, you really, really do need dark shadows still. Um, yeah, iffy, I'm sure. <laughs> ah, dear. This is, the, this is the Golden Retriever and Labrador Retriever uh, genetics. Uh, test, which is pretty much the more they bred light colored dogs together, the lighter and lighter the dogs got. So Targaryens, as we know, are into inbreeding and it explains their really, really, really pale silver hair, hair color. Essentially they bleached out just like the, the really like white Labradors that you see these days. I'm just going to add a little water. We're going to make it lighter. We're going to add a drop of our Syrian sand. So we're, uh, we're mixing. 
to start out with. You know, I can't, I'm not gonna even, even if there is stuff, ah, okay, well, two drops of Arcyrian Sand. We did want a light blonde. <laughs> it burned out. Uh, Targaryens equals Labradors. Yep. <laughs> uh, you can't, when you've got a world as complex as that, you really can't hold it against the author if he has some inconsistencies. Like, as a writer, I can tell you how hard it is to keep track of every little gosh darn thing that came out of your head onto the page. Yeah, exactly. But but that happens, right? When you're when you've got inbreeding, you accentuate traits, right? So if you have a slight trait, then it becomes more accentuated through inbreeding. Which is why purebred dogs can get into trouble. All right, so we're going to do just a half. Remember how I do a half drop? We kind of squeeze it out and we kind of just smear it off on the side of the palette before we do a full drop. So I don't want too much harvest brown. I want to see how this works, but I do want some brown. I want more brown than normal. So this is the this dark is going to counteract this light, and we're probably going to end up with a color that's similar in shade, meaning light and dark, um, which is similar to this ochre. Uh, and then we'll have to adjust. But what I'm aiming for here is now a starting color. Oh, well, yeah, but that was intentional, Nomad Zeke. Like, Gurm stated up front that he was like, you know, I, I cannot, you know, they're going to diverge. This is this is the way they want to go. I'm still going to tell my story the way I'm going to tell my story. Um, you get that even in. I mean, I, I am one of the people who, even though I love Tolkien and have read him since I was a kid... I still think Peter Jackson did a bang up job on Lord of the Rings, um, even with the inconsistencies. Like I think he still did a great job. Um, however, The Hobbit just don't get me on that. <laughs> oh dear. So I'm gonna add another drop. Actually, you know what? Two, three, four, five. Let's just make it a one to one, and go that way. Now I have a nice big, big puddle of base color. So see what color I've gone here. I have made my yellow and I pushed it much more toward a little bit of brown and a bit of white. And the yellow that I'm in the and the the off white that I'm using has a lot of yellow in it as well. Yeah, exactly. I am you and I see eye to eye, Nomad Zeke on that one. We've got but Lord of the Rings, yeah, masterful. Agree. Yeah. Yeah, Val, but the, the difference is then that you take this and for building your shadows and your highlight, you may, you add one thing. So from here, I'm just going to add pure white. Or maybe I would just add Osirian sand since it is part of it in there. Um, for shadows, I'm just going to add an additional touch of Harvest Brown. That's it. So, so you can do it both ways. You can do what I told you to do because you have out front mixing problems. <laughs> And start with one bottled color in the middle. That's the easiest way to do it. But when you don't have, uh, when you're trying to like make a custom blonde, for example, then you're going to be mixing that color. Make sure to add just one color for shadows and one color for highlights. If I wanted to keep it the simplest ever, I would add the shadow color that I already have in here. And I would use build highlights with the highlight I already have in here. This would be the easiest way to do it. Because then this color already has a little bit of Harvest Brown in it, so it's going to go with it just fine. And this color is already built half with Osirian Sand, so this is going to work just fine. Ta-da! So. We are not even in the books. Yes, yes. But to be fair, you know, that's just because Tolkien was more of a historian than a fiction writer. Um, HM Road Dog, because I have people who I am coaching who are, who are, uh, just starting out and you don't need to do it the easy way if you have a really confident grasp of mixing. But for a lot of people, they don't, they, they don't start out that way. So keep it simple at the beginning. And then as you get more confident and you understand color and pigments better, you can branch out. So we're going to move this on as our base coat. Then we're going to take some of it over to the sides. And this is, even though it looks like a dark blonde here with the palette, when I put it on the mini, look how light it looks. So we got a lot of light stuff on this model. This is a very, very light, 
like as far as shade goes and when i talk about shade i'm not talking about like shadow colors or anything shade is the art term that uh talks about how relatively light or dark a color is so you can have a dark shade of red or you can have a light shade of red so when i talk about shade that's what i'm talking about relative light or dark Well, yeah, it's, if you're used to, and, and Val, you missed the beginning, maybe. I don't remember if you missed the part where I was talking about how most people make blonde too yellow. But if you look at pictures of blonde hair, it's this. It's not, it's not this. Nor is it this. This is even too yellow, and this is an off yellow. But that's why... If you want it more yellow, the easiest way to get it more yellow is to glaze at the end so that you can adjust gently. Because there will come a point when suddenly you're like, oh my god, that looks like she's got crayon hair. And again, just to emphasize this, again, it's about your goals. If you are out to paint a very cartoony model, like a very, very, like, um, like okay, Val. So the Mercy, Overwatch Mercy, she's blonde. You sent me a bunch of pictures of her, right? And some of those artists are choosing to go with a very bright yellow hair. Um, but if you look at the rest of their piece, they're going bright with all their colors everywhere. And so that is their artistic choice based directly on the color theory, like what they're doing elsewhere. So the brighter we go, and this is why I said if we wanted to, we could take her hair bright. Because we have all these jewel tone bright colors on the rest of the model. But I tend to hate yellow, yellow, yellow hair. I think it looks terrible. So I am more likely to paint this naturally with this natural color and then glaze with something like Lantern or Marigold or Saffron Sunset. Very gently putting in some uh, color up here around her hairband. She's also got that little jewel in the middle of her forehead. We need to figure out how to do that. I did because I was lining around the face. I didn't intentionally pre-line the hair so much as I was just lining around the face and arms. So the hair ended up pre-lined. HM. Usually I don't do that because it means that you have to be very, very careful when you're actually filling in the territory. But when you get down to your last area that you're painting, you will know of necessity. If you have lined everything else as you went, you will have a pre-lined area. In which case, if you lose your lining because you're painting over it, you might have to go back and reline. But when it's the last thing that you've done, that's not so bad. So now we, we are seeing more yellow now. And the reason that it looks very much like the skin tone, well, first of all, it's the same kind of yellow, right? So it looks similar. But then as you put more of it on, remember the bigger an area something takes up, the more you see the color in it. So if she had hair like down to her waist, you would see the yellow big time. No, it wouldn't, Val. Way too yellow. Way too yellow. It would make a fur color if it was like a lion or a leopard or a cheetah, something that is golden. But this is not a skin color. Not even an Asian skin color. Maybe a highlight for an African skin color, but only if it's a very golden skin tone. As another one of my coaches like, like ran into lately, using one of my... And this is interesting, because actually, uh, Dee Clearman, are you on today? I wanted to talk about that. I had a thought about your model, your chibi model over the weekend. Maybe I'll just text you. But except that everybody can learn from this. So I have a PDF with an African skin tone recipe. That was one of the first things I ever did for my Patreon. And it's done on a 28. Okay. So it's done on a 28 millimeter model. So David tried to put it on a chibi. And the problem we ran into is directly related to what we're running into here, where the bigger an area something takes up, the brighter the color is. So that yellow highlight worked really well on a 28 millimeter tiny face. But then when you put it on a giant chibi head, where it's like six times larger, it didn't look natural. It actually started to look more Mongol and less African. So the answer was that the highlight was too yellow for a large area. So you can get into color trouble that way, even with recipes that work at 28 when you switch it up. Because remember the point of a 28 millimeter model, guys, is to make everything stand out. It's why we do lining. It's why we reach for contrast. All that stuff is to make out, make all these tiny details pop, right? So, <laughs> yes, 
Yeah, this would be like a really kind of, I don't know, I wouldn't even use it for an Asian skin color. Like, it's not. It's really, it's a good fur color, but it's not a good skin color. It doesn't have enough pink in it. Even, like, like it's, it needs a little bit. Even for Asiatic skin tones, they'll get a flush. Um... So you, if you choose something to yellow, it just looks like, it looks like Simpsons. Like, you could paint a Simpsons model with this. <laughs> oh, dear. Amazon guard from Capsule Chibi Patreon. Uh-oh. That means Chibi Amy might not be able to get it. And she's going to, like, growl at you. Dandy Clearman. <laughs> but anyway, so yeah. So it is a thing. Like, how much area. If, if she had hair all the way down to here and we painted it, it would look so yellow. But here, in a much smaller area... If we want it to show more yellow, we'll need to brighten it. Even though that's not a natural blonde color, I would still have to do it because of the scale. So scale is so important when it comes to choosing colors as far as whether you want something to look natural or unnatural. We always push it a little bit much when we're dealing with the 28 millimeter. We always punch our colors a little extra. We punch our shadows a little darker. We punch our highlights a little higher. And then as you get up to where you're trying to work on something, that's very realistic you realize how much you have to make things much softer right you don't accentuate the yellow you don't accentuate the red you don't line everything super dark you know so it's it's both scale and style it's this inner marriage and then it's just flat out color theory and making things look the way we think that we need them to look That's because when you put it on the model, Val, um, it changes depending on everything else. But if you actually have this in person, and this could be your monitor too. Remember, everybody's monitor is calibrated differently. Looking at the, um, the model on my monitor, the hair is carrying off a little bit lighter than it is in person, just a tad, um, just because I've got this darker gray background. So when we work on lighter models, uh, everything tends to shift just a tiny bit light. Um, because I don't have infinite amounts of different grays for my background. Uh, but yeah, since this is such a lightweight light model. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to do a base coat on the uh, gold. Yeah, it's, um, it's the most realistic face I've ever done, Twisted Oma. And I'm still working on it. Like I fixed the eyes the other night. Um, now I need to really get some highlights on the hair so that I can kind of assess it. Because like I said, everything changes when you put a color next to your existing color. Like as I fill in the hair, it's gonna change how the skin looks. I'm also taking um, taking an online course in, in the head, specifically drawing and painting the head, which is uh, hopefully gonna inform my bust painting a lot by teaching me more about the structure and also realistic light and shadow. Um, so I'm looking forward to that. I started on it, but it's, you know, hard to find time to sketch in between all the other things I do. Thank you for the Patreon poke. I have mentioned it a couple times during this, uh, this course of this uh, thingy, thingy video. I guess those who are watching this afterwards, it'll be a video. But now it's a stream, right? Um, I'm all over the place today. <laughs> I have so much energy. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, so that's my Patreon. Go over and give it a look. I have some fun free stuff up. Um, I do a lot of stuff with color theory on there. Uh, my $2 tier is more uh, basic. My $10 tier, I'm starting to branch out and do some more uh, elaborate stuff. I may do the Sky Earth on that uh, bust that I just showed uh, for my $10 tier. Because I've been threatening people with doing Sky Earth for a while. But we'll have to see. We'll have to see if I can make it look not like bad. <laughs> Dragon Pink, if you are on my, um, if you're on my Discord, just go to the awesome thing that Margaret um, on the Road to Tiamat put up. Uh, she did a a, uh, a Patreon directory, and she breaks it down by title and every month since I started, and she updates it regularly. So then you can just skim through, and uh, and then you can go back to the Patreon and just kind of like look at published posts and just kind of skim through until you get to the right time period and then you'll find it a lot faster than reading through each post you know bit by bit i also somebody did point out i i, I am good about using tags so if you need this stuff on skin tones just search for skin tones and it should pop up all the stuff i've done on skin tones <sighs> all righty so i'm base coating and this is looking so dark the gold 
but I want that. And I want to get this base coated up here because again, when I do this, it's going to make the hair look different, right? I'm going to put a dark thing next to the hair. The hair is going to make this gold thing look more dark. And the gold thing is going to make the hair look more light. It's just the inverse function of what happens. And I'm being very, very, very gentle. Mm, I should use this other brush. Or was this the brush? I guess that's my that's my broken in brush. I found myself another, I found another 8408 uh, Raphael um, languishing in my paint box. So now I have three. I have this one that is starting to get worn down a bit and then two backups. So excitement. Okay, so we're just gonna essentially, this is, remember I hit that point in the model where I want everything blocked in. And that this is where I am now. So I don't, these little thingies don't have edges, these little turquoise thingies on our own, but this bracelet does have gold edges. So just use, um, I'm thinning the paint. I want to say it's about a two to one paint to water, maybe a three to one. Rich leather um, covers fairly well. And uh, I can put on a couple of quick coats. That's not a big deal. Doo -doo. Just making sure I'm keeping up on the... Yeah, there's no way, P Patreon doesn't have a good way to archive posts, but I do use good search terms. Um, so yeah, so if like you're looking for busts, you can just type in bust into the search field and it should bring up all of the posts that I've tagged with busts. And that is stuff, not even stuff that is just about bust painting, but stuff where I use a bust as an example. Um, things like that. And then she's got this top bracelet, which we're just going to make gold we want some contrast up there behind the fingers so think about that stuff like right up here this bracelet goes behind these outstretched fingers so i could make it light but then it would be hard to see the fingers so if i make it more of a dark gold and keep a shadow there like it would be if the hand is over it um it'll make these fingers stand out more so when you've got something on top of another thing and your top thing is dark think about going light under it and if your top thing is light go dark under it little bits of contrast yeah i don't i don't know if she i guess she could link to everything that would take a lot of time though and it's not like i'm paying margaret for her time so but it does give you a much better idea of where to find things and everything should be open to you now val there was a problem when i added the new tier um patreon just does not do this very well and it's probably a back-end problem so it's something they can't fix easily uh, but that when you add a new tier, you have to go through manually and give permissions on everything you've done to that new tier. Uh, so that being the case, uh, I went through and I did update everything. So you can now get to everything if you're in my highest tier. And I think when I was scrolling through all the posts, it was like, scroll 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 and then it would stop and load more and it was about every six months that it stopped to load more so it, it isn't that much scrolling if you want to find a specific video and like i said you can always use the tags i try to tag everything with very applicable stuff so like if you look for color workshop, you're going to get all the $5 things and even some uh, in other tiers where I talk about color. And if you look for, um, oh, what's some of the other stuff I've done? Uh, if you're looking for a specific thing, like you want all of the, um, the Dragonkin paint along, you should be able to search for Dragonkin and paint along. Um, you'll get the Tara paint alongs if you search for paint along. But if you ser just search for Dragonkin, you're probably only going to get that particular paint along. So I did that on purpose, I, I believe in tags, um, and it should make it very easy. The tags are probably the easiest way to come up with anything. So if you see, if you're looking for an MM tutorial and you look and, you've, and you see that it was in October of 2019, then just type NMM in as a search term, it'll bring up all the NMM things, and then you can go easily to the one that's in October 2019 and click on it. Easiest way to navigate. Yeah, it should all be open. Tell me, tell me if it's not, Val. 
some of the stuff like where I was asking questions about something of the public or, or doing sharing an update, I may not have opened, but all the content will be open to you. It was just a lot. It was a lot of work to go back and do all that. So stuff that I considered non-essential, I just uh, left it. Like that in mini auctions, like I didn't, I didn't open those up, obviously, because they're past. Okay, there we go. Getting all this gold filled in. And I really need to add more spectral glow, uh, glow over there, phantom glow or whatever the heck it was. That teal thing that I really like to use. All right, and we got to get this little uh, medallion on the side of her head back here. <laughs> yeah, David was talking about a 3D printer, Chibi, and I told him, well, if you want a resin printer, there are fumes to consider, and then we need a surface that is more or less stable. And so really what we really need is a garage with a cement foundation, um, and we don't have that because we're in an apartment. <laughs> Yeah, it'll be funny if the thing that gets David to buy a house is wanting a 3D printer. <laughs> Most expensive 3D printer ever. <laughs> Although actually he was saying it's the most expensive puppy ever because, you know, I want a house before I have a puppy again. Most likely. Or at least want to be renting a house. Just makes it so much easier. All right. So I think we've got all our gold like kind of blocked in. And it's the darkest. The darkest areas are actually our metal. Which is so weird, huh? <laughs> 3D printer and print the house. <laughs> Too cold to print in the garage, yeah. Well, see, I get... it's it's We buy a house for him to get a 3D printer and me to get a puppy. Most expensive 3D printer and puppy ever. Yes. <laughs> uh, we don't have a good positioning for any of that, Brent, sadly. And I, having just gotten this a hobby room slash office organized nicely, the last thing I want to do is throw the whole thing up in the air and have to rebuild it. <laughs> I'm not printing a prop puppy. I, I, I want a real fuzzy puppy. And, and 3D printers cannot yet print fuzzy puppies. All right, let's see here. So let's get back to our blonde hair. Now that I've blocked in this color, I can try to shade our blonde. Um, so shading is going to be the next step with our hair. I am going to put one more coat on. Oh, good. Well, dude, I am so glad. Or Henry. That dude, Henry. Yeah, Rhonda wrote those. Um, she has a Patreon and does a blog. And you don't have to, like, have access to her blog um, to, you know, have her Patreon. Or, or you don't have to support her Patreon to have access to her blog, which is called Bird with a Brush. But uh, she's you're currently using her Patreon to uh, kind of pay for the time she puts into her blog. But, yeah, so if you liked Rhonda's Learn to Paint Kits, check out uh, patreon.com slash bird with a brush, all one word. And uh, you can also uh, f find her blog. But yeah, Rhonda's great at explaining things. Like, she's very good at breaking down things into easy steps. And uh, I think she's got a very user-friendly way of putting stuff that way. Hey, Chia, what's up? <laughs> Except I'm not into pugs. I am not into pugs. I'm sorry. I am a shepherd girl through and through. I, I will not paint a pug. Just because I'm just not into pugs. But I love shepherds. Alrighty. So there we go. We've got a nice solid base coat on that hair. And now we're going to add some stuff that's going to make it look a little more golden. I still have to paint my German Shepherd Druid from the uh, Dungeons and Doggies. I did find my Dungeons and Doggies. I still have to do my closet. It's the one thing left in this office to get like under control is I need to go through that closet and be really hard on stuff that I want to keep and stuff I want to uh, give to friends and or liquidate and or pack away. So 
All right, so we're gonna go a little bit more orangey. We're gonna do Harvest Brown. We already used our Harvest Brown to create this color that we started the hair with. Yeah, Jason Weeby loves his pugs too, but I, I've just always been a herding breed type of person. I love the, um, I love the trainability, the intelligence, even the independence and the, uh, just the way they focus on you. I just really love it. I would never go non-herding. I mean, the only breed that I, I grew up with a breed that was, I grew up with a Sheltie and a German short-haired pointer. So I had two, two ob, uh, end spectrums of the dog world, two different spectrums of the dog world. So we're going to do another, we're very going to be very cautious with this color, guys, because it's so intense. It's very highly pigmented and it's going to impact our color a lot. So again, I'm going to use a half drop. And when I say half drop, I'm getting a little bit out and I'm just dabbing it off on the side. I'm not doing a full drop. And that lets me go, and I'm still probably going to change this color a lot. So let's see. We do want it significantly different to have a shadow. So as I add this, you know, it's going to darken it. It's going to make it a little orangier and a little browner. It actually didn't shift it as much as I thought. So I'm going to do another half drop. Oh yeah, Aussie. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I looked at Aussies, but I want something. I was, um, I did Shiloh Shepherds and I like the smooth coat, which is more like a traditional German Shepherd coat. I like that shorter coat. That's the only thing that, that makes me hesitate with the Aussie is I really don't want a long coated dog again. I had one with Leo and he, boy, he had coat. I like the wash and wear dogs. I like them fuzzy enough so that they have a double coat so that you can pet them enjoyably so they're not a pointer, but but I uh, I don't want the, a lot of fluff dog anymore. I used to think I wanted a lot of fluff dogs until I had one, but I just, uh, I need to get on, I need to get myself on a better like brushing uh, habit before that happens. Ha, <laughs> ah, Bryce. Enzo blog. <laughs> Enzo's a cutie. Like, they're cute dogs. I could see why people really like pugs. It's just not my breed. Like, I need to be able to watch an animal move and just go, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I like I like how dynamic shepherds are, I guess, is what it comes down to. And I also like long-legged, wolfy-looking dogs. What can I say? All right. I'm going to take a little bit of this just pure out. And I'm going to start, remember we made the half of our main starting color with Palomino Gold. So they, you could be smart and you could, here, let's do this actually. Probably the smartest thing. I'm trying to like teach you guys good habits so I shouldn't like go advanced. So all right, we're just going to use a little bit of our Harvest Brown in a separate thing to make a shadow. Remember what I said that we would do that and if you mix shadows, stick to, if you've created a complex midtone, stick to one color for your shadow and one color for your highlight. Even if, even if you're taking your complex midtone and mixing that color into it. So we'll see how we can do this. And I'm maybe just a tiny bit there. All right, so kind of figuring out how much shadow color I need. Yeah, that's nice, sales department. Yeah, and it's nice that Australian Shepherds still have like a, a working club that's not the AKC show club. Um, there's a whole story behind that, by the way, with dog politics. But, uh, but I think it's good for the breed. Oh, nice. Mom's getting a Sheltie. Dave, Dave Pugh, Dave, Ed's brother, has Shelties and loves Shelties. So you could totally get on Reaper Dave's good size co side coops by, like, uh, you know, sharing uh, Sheltie puppy pictures on uh, <laughs> Discord. I had a Sable Sheltie growing up. He was actually, like, almost had a mahogany. It was a really dark Sable. It was really pretty. He was the one who humiliated me in 4-H Dog Project because he was smarter than me. <laughs> ah, the, the trials of having a dog that is smarter than you. I'm going to actually thicken this a little bit. I tried to shade the hair and I had already I had thinned down my Harvest Brown too much. So I wanted a little bit stronger. Remember what we just talked about earlier, guys. On 28 millimeters, everything's got to be more. Um, so your highlights have to be brighter. Your, your shadows need to be darker. You know, your colors need to be need to be more saturated you know more pop for them to everything to show up um it's it's and then when you transition to like doing busts or bigger models you can actually go with a lot more subtlety you don't need as much drama unless you want to um and th then it's a style choice rather than a necessity yeah it can also backfire on you a little bit with some breeds right twistedoma as far as drive level right especially with herding and uh like sledding breeds 
a working husky is a different beast than a show husky. So you do have to know what you're getting into with the breed if you're going to get a working lines dog. Like, that's, that's extremely true also with Border Collies. You can find a couch potato Border Collie, but it's not usually going to come from a working line. So that's not what they're, it's not their purpose. It's doesn't, uh, it's not where they come from. Although one of my, one of my friends in, in Shiloh's actually did have a couch potato Border Collie. She got lucky. <laughs> oh, yay. Yeah, Shelties. They're nice dogs. They're nice dogs. I, I wanted a full-size Collie and my family was like, no. And I wanted a German Shepherd and my dad was like, no, because he had just, I, apparently he just had bad experiences with Shepherds. But my grandparents, the, the people who built my formative idea of what a dog should be were my grandparents who always had Shepherd uh, Collie mixes. Which actually looked a lot like, a, uh, their dog Mac actually looked a lot like a long-coated Shiloh Shepherd, or uh, yeah. Shiloh. So when I saw Shiloh's, I was like, oh. Yeah, that's because of the inbreeding. I mean, it's, it's, um, it's present in both. But, uh, show lines tend to be trying to hit a particular look. And so I think they're more prone to line breed. And, and, but when I say inbreeding, by the way, I'm talking inbreeding back like 50 or 80 years ago. So... Inbreeding never goes away, but it's how purebred dog breeds are made. So it's like the, I think, I think, I wish there was a little bit more focus, uh, world, like overall on, on dog health. I mean, there's a lot of like focus on identifying trouble genes, but there doesn't seem to be a lot of focus on like better breeding practices, but that's, you know, that's my opinion and I may be wrong. Alrighty. Now we shaded the hair down. See how it has changed. Let us get closer. There we go. Yeah, I firmly do endorse, uh, other than, like, I, I do like breed rescues. A lot of breed rescues really have their hearts in the right place, and they've got people who are, you know, locally funded and putting in their time, you know, to help because they love the breed. Uh, we had a great Pyrenees rescue back in Denton. That was wonderful. Um, and there was also a really good uh, shepherd and shepherd mix rescue. Both were run by, you know, just private individuals who love their breeds. Um, and they really did a good job. So I'm darkening down. Notice how orangey I'm bringing this. I'm bringing shadows in. And it is brightening up. Um, as far as saturation level, because I'm using such an orangey brown here. This is the color I'm painting with. This is 9200 Harvest Brown. Um, and it's giving us that kind of reddish undertone that a lot of blondes will have. They'll have a reddish brown kind of undertone if they're a richer blonde. Uh, get it, dog. <laughs> Automama pops up. Boop. Yeah, because instinct, yeah, instinctual. Yeah, it's instinctual behavior. Uh, a, a corgi puppy will herd cows. <laughs> it's terribly cute, but you also get terribly stressed out watching it because it's like, that cow kicks that little baby and it's done. Um, all right, let's build a highlight so that we can work with both shadows and highlights at the same time. Now that I'm blocking in shadows, once again, we're going to go, we've got two choices. We can build our highlight with Osirian sand or we can just add white. I tend to do the just add white thing. I could go Osirian sand. It's just that I know that Osirian Sand doesn't have as high of a load of white in it. And if I'm going to take my highlights up to pure white anyway, I may as well. So now again, we're going to transfer a few brushfuls. This is why we built such a big puddle to start with. And then we're going to drop a drop of white in. We're just going to use one drop of white because uh, pure white is very uh, pigment loaded. Oh, this is a fresh new bottle too. I think my old bottle was getting low, so I have fresh, fresh bottle which I will probably go through in six months. And this is why nobody should be afraid about using too much paint. Because I use pure white for freaking everything, and it still takes me six months to go through a bottle, and I paint every day. Oh, no problem, Twisted Oma. Yeah, 
Yeah, that's a great thing about older breeders, right? They've seen it all and they've seen what can happen and they've worked with puppy people for so long that they really have um, a good, uh, you know, awareness. They're, they're great people to, to head up rescues for that reason. Because you have to work with puppy people and, you know, figure out who gets your puppies, then finding good homes for rescue dogs and being aware of the problems in your breed and, you know, the pitfalls is so valuable. So that's really cool. So I've mixed a couple of lighter colors here. I mixed a color at first, but it was almost, it was just too dark. Notice how I'm, notice how I've done this, guys. So here, let me back up and talk about this because there's a thing about this. All right, so all the colors I've mixed for the blonde hair are thusly. And my original triad was more like a traditional reaper triad, although this should be a little lighter. But this and this and this. But notice that I'm not using those colors. I'm not using these in-between colors. I'm actually going to reach for my dark dark and my light light. Why am I doing that? I am doing that because, again, it's a 28 millimeter. I don't need colors that are this close to create a good effect. I want drama. I want contrast. So even though I mixed these colors, I had promptly decided they were too close. And instead, I'm going to go for the more extremes. Especially with hair. Hair is shiny. It requires some contrast. Uh, last night, I made ribs. David does love it when I make ribs. David loves like almost every food, every food thing I make. Like it is so gratifying to have a significant other who pretty much loves your cooking, period. I'm trying to think if there's anything I've made that's in my regular like recipe stable that he doesn't like. And I don't think there's anything. Yeah, we made ribs. He, he gets ribs for lunch because we had leftovers. Um... And uh, tonight I made um, I made prime rib soup out of my leftover prime rib bones and leftover prime rib and some beef stew meat. So uh, we're going to have the rest of that tonight. And I got some lamb shanks, so I might do lamb shanks tomorrow. We'll see how my energy level is. I like, I really like lamb, so. All right, so now we're going to remember as we get toward the highlights, that's when we start picking out um, chunks of hair and threads of hair. So I can bring this in. Oh, by the way, I pretty much have mixed Osirian sand here. Or something very close to it. Look at that. <laughs> I could have just used this color after all. Remember what I said? I should have just stuck to it. Should have just should have just stuck to it and done that. But if I add Osirian sand to this, it pretty much is exactly the same color. Yeah, Bryce, uh, I I do cook. I do cook. Um, and then what did I do last time? I don't know. Oh, I did mahi mahi with um with a coconut lime. Uh, uh, sauce and uh, coconut lime rice. It was fun. Uh, that was a new one. We had we just we hadn't done that before. But I've been looking for a preparation for co for mahi mahi that I actually enjoyed. I'm waiting for my new. Uh, I ordered a new thing for Christmas for myself, and it's taking a while to get here because COVID. But I ordered a new Le Creuset fry pan, ceramic coated nonstick um, from. Uh, uh, William Sonoma. So I'm waiting for that, and that's my scallop pan. And once once that thing arrives, I am going to work on how to cook scallops until I nail it. Because the thing is with scallops is like sometimes I nail it, and then the rest of the time I don't. <laughs> yeah, hyper. But it's still funny that just with random mixing, I managed to pretty much almost nail the color that I originally said I should start with. That's why I think it's funny. There is a slight difference, and the uh, and the Osirian sand is greener because if you think about it, this color has this in it. So if I had not put as much of the brown into this, it would probably be a perfect match. But because I put brown into my initial mixture here, that's what's pushing it warmer. I love scallops too, and they're so simple, but getting them right is not simple. They're also a very stressful food because you pretty much have to finish them and eat them right away. So when I make them, I have to like make sure everything else is done all at the same time. And that that is somewhat stressful to me. So But I decided I was going to try to nail scallops because if I can absolutely nail my scallop technique, it will become less stressful. Yeah, Bryce. I, I we're both foodies. David and I are both foodies. So 
Now we do still do like brats or burgers or you know, yeah. One of our qu quickie things is actually fajitas because you can just toss them on the grill. But even then, I'm like oven roasting peppers for it and things like that, you know, because I can. Why 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 wouldn't I? I love the flavor of uh, roasted peppers and onions. So we're kind of using our highlight color to just kind of pick out these little um, bits so that we can see the details of our hair here. And if I need to, I'm gonna bring in my dark again to bring out some of these strands. I don't want it everywhere. I don't want all my dark everywhere, but I want it to come in and uh, give me some separation here. Oh yeah, my ramen. Yeah, learning to make ramen from like a whole, sh I had a whole pork shoulder. I bought this huge butt roast and broke it down. And then we've gotten like already gotten like two ramens out of it. And we'll probably do another one. I found an awesome ramen recipe that pretty much makes it from like you, you start with making the broth with your pork shoulder and then you um, oven your pork shoulder after you mix it with sauce and brown it, caramelize it. It's pretty awesome. Haggis, Meeps and Daddy Pizza. Apparently it tastes not bad. <laughs> That's funny. When the when the best thing you can say is that something doesn't taste bad, that's that makes me raise an eyebrow. <sighs> but yeah, we are very foodie. I'm trying to double down on my uh, on eating less. So my I'm mostly I'm attacking portion sizes and still uh, still making the good food. Just gonna eat less of the good food. Yeah, we don't have a smoker because apartment. Mm -hmm. So what I've uh, actually taken to doing is um, browning it, then putting it in the instant pot, pressure cooking it so that it's fall apart awesome in very short period of time. Uh, and then that also makes the broth, you add some more seasoning into it. Um, and then removing it, shredding it, mixing it with uh, your appropriate seasonings or sauce, and then caramelizing it under the broiler. And then that becomes your meat. It, uh, it's a pretty, like, it's it's like a multi-step ramen process, but the ramen that it makes is awesome. And I make uh, ramen caramel eggs, too. Yeah. Yes, I could totally do a cooking stream at this point. Although I haven't deconstructed everything as much as, like, I deconstruct painting. Like, I have a staple of recipes that I make just like almost everybody has kind of like a staple, you know, bunch of recipes they had to come back to. It's just that my recipes are things like shrimp scampi and prime rib. <laughs> oh, dear. Yeah, we've got a grill. I looked at smoker boxes and everything had such mixed reviews for them that I coming from Texas where everybody, well, okay, well, we used to have a real smoker. Um, I just, uh, we'll just wait on it. Maybe we'll get a smoker if we get a house with a yard and such, but I don't know. I like smoking is awesome and yet it does take so long. It's such a time commitment and sometimes it's a babysitting time commitment. So you can't just let it, let it go. You do kind of have to keep an eye on it. Um, so we'll see. So we've got our blonde hair coming up here. It's still very close to our skin color. Let me see if I can get it to look more yellow if I put it under white. Yeah, there we go. So now you can see the difference that our, our intense brown uh, underpinnings and shadows have caused our hair to shift more vibrant. If I really want to punch it, I'll do a glaze with lantern, marigold yellow, or saffron sunset. Most people I know who have tried saffron sunset say it is the choice, uh, the, the paint of choice for that. But it really, you know, any orangey yellow you probably could use. Or yellowy orange, I should say. Yeah. My ex did that, too. It's just, like, then the cleanup of the smoker. That's, like, mostly what makes me. I remember the cleanup just being gross. And, like, ugh. And I just question whether uh, it's worth it. For me. For me. 
many people it is. If you are a barbecue meat connoisseur, it is always worth it. But I make pretty good oven ribs with smoked salt and, uh, you know, keeping a moisture pan in there and all that. Like, if I felt like my ribs were inferior, then I would be more tempted to like, go for a smoker eventually. But I feel like they're pretty good, so... They're pretty tasty, even if they don't have the smoke ring. All right, get a little bit of a highlight down here. We want to get bring out those. Don't want a, as high of a highlight down there, but we do want to bring stuff out. Oh yeah, yeah. I I I know that some of them have apps and everything too, Bryce. That is a good point. It's just like I already spend so much time on cooking and it takes away from uh, my hobbying and my, you know, just general enjoyment of my evening. I'm like, do I really want to add something that that uses even more time to cook? Yeah, and like I said, I'll just have to see. Like my real, what I usually ask myself is, can I make a good enough version of this as is or do I need extra equipment? Because we have such a small apartment. I mean, it's a decent sized one for California, but it's, you know, it's not, not anything huge. And, uh, so I have to really question the utility of anything I bring in. Just trying to get kind of a balance here between my shadows and my highlights. I want the hair strands to come out. Ah, uh, yeah, drip trays. Yep. Makes sense. I'm going to put a shadow underneath her arm there. Let's make a shadow at the top of her hair. I'm going to grab some uh, water and just kind of like blend that in a little bit. Yeah, I'm trying to make more seafood recently, so I'm, I do want to get my scallop pan, but it's probably not going to hit me until next week. Maybe the week after. Just because shipping delays. Yeah, right. What I really want, actually, is I'm, I'm terribly, terribly jealous, Bryce, of uh, Michael Kleiman's pizza oven. Like, I would love to have, like, an outdoor oven like that to mess around with. <laughs> that would be super fun. Like, you could maybe do some really awesome stuff with that. So if I was really going over the top... All right, so we got a little bit of a highlight here, a little bit of a highlight there. Bring it down a little bit. Got our yellow, got the hair, gonna go to the back. Well, it's pretty cold here right now in the South Bay. Like, it's getting down into the, like the low 40s at night and stuff like that. So like after a certain part of the day, and it's been kind of cold and rainy, um, after a certain part of the day, it's not fun to be outdoors, although the middle of the day is very nice. But yeah, any time that's not winter out here would definitely be a great outdoor eating. And we grilled a lot this last this past summer and ate outside a lot on our balcony, which was really nice. So notice how much dimension just that little bit of shading gives things. Yeah, you need to take Michael up on that. Like when I did my... Um, do a, ask him if he'll, uh, he might have, he might have hated it when we did, he did it for me. But when I did a workshop out there, Bryce, Michael, uh, hosted it up in Napa. So, uh, people drove up from the city to take the workshop and he cooked for us. And, uh, yeah, yeah, it's, you need to take Michael up on that. Maybe you should say, hey, Michael, if I do a workshop, will you host it? Ah. <laughs> uh. Yeah, you guys even got some. I know I saw that lots of snow in weird places, right? Weird weather coming through. We're supposed to get a lot of rain, which we really need. Like, it's been really dry this winter. I haven't even lived here through a whole winter, but I remember it's supposed to be the rainy season, and it is really, um, California has been kind of in drought position, uh, so far this year in the winter. We have not been getting the water we need. Now I'm just going to kind of bring in, I'm bringing in the shadows wherever they look a little bit too much. I'm going to knock them back a little bit. 
but I want that I want those strands to be apparent yeah yeah we need more water I wish we had your water in our I did see that it was that first they were saying chance of rain all this week and I fingers crossed all right so I'm gonna take in this brown too and I'm gonna put a shadow underneath this arm up over her head because we want that to be darker can also put a little bit of a shadow next to her headband depends on how dark you want to take the blonde notice that the hair at this point still looks blonde although it's getting darker as I give the uh, plants of snow all this week wow where are you Bryce are you up in mountains mountain country more mountainous <laughs> let's see here and thank you VCR it's getting there uh no I haven't oh Reno oh okay so Nevada down south um no, I haven't. I got my Muse. I got my Muse's Kickstarter, though, and I'm so psyched to start on some of that. Oh, my gosh. Those look so good. And the, the sculpts are so nice. And they're smaller than I thought. They're 80 millimeter, but they're 80 millimeter, like, naturally scaled humans. So they actually are quite delicate. I really love them. I can't wait. Oh, four hours east. Okay. Yeah, I don't know. Cal I don't, like, I haven't been able to drive anywhere. So I totally, like, don't no california yet except that we drove down to yosemite from david's place last winter so i know that but i, I like i have it's no i have zero geographical awareness <laughs> unlike in texas where i drove everywhere i drove to arizona from texas up to santa fe and i drove you know out east a bit and i drove down to you know we went down to houston and stuff like that um oh we're gonna come ski with you david is so sad that covid for for david covid means no skiing because he really wants to just take a day trip. He doesn't want to stay anywhere, you know, because COVID. So he uh, he's sad because, like, the, there, there really isn't good day, tip, day trip skiing here. So he's been very sad. I'll tell him that you say he can come out and ski with you. But And I, I would like to take up skiing again. I skied when I was in high school a little bit. Like, skied very badly. Like, I, I really just had a few starter lessons and managed to get down most green hills without falling on my snout but it was a close thing um but i would take up skiing again david is really good though like he's a hot dog i'm kind of relieved that he's doing yoga with me now because he probably needs more core strength or he's gonna hurt himself <laughs> ah you've already had it stay with you all right i'll tell him that we might take you up on that we have not had it because we've been very very careful maybe maybe he'll uh He'll say we can take a road trip to visit Bryce. You know, we can actually bring our painting stuff and we can go ski. And uh, do they give, um, do they have a place though, Bryce, that gives beginner lessons? Because I really feel it's been 20 years since I was on skis. And I really feel like I would need a uh, serious um, retraining to be, to be uh, at all like capable But yeah, it would be nice to go. I know David would like to go. Done. All right. <laughs> buy, buy an RV for your ski trip. I uh, rented an RV once. We uh, we used to go back when our breed founder was alive. Um, the uh, National Shiloh Shepherd Show that we had was uh, up in near her place in upstate New York. And we road tripped from Texas to uh, New York a couple times. And one of them we decided to rent an RV. I essentially sold all of our old Warhammer models that we weren't uh, we weren't using that were still like we had a lot of stuff that was still in boxes and I was like we're never gonna use this and so I sold it all on eBay and made like two thousand dollars and paid for our vacation. But yeah, it was interesting. It it gave me an insight on the the pluses and minuses for RVs. Oh yeah, my back is good, Jabberwock. As long as I don't do too many, I'm not. I can't do twisties. Can't no twisties. Um, beyond this, I can. I can wobble. 
Um, but otherwise, yeah, I rested it and did PT on all all weekend. I got a good good long rest. It's the only the only upside to uh, not having my streams on Thursday and Friday was that I got a good long rest and uh, was able to baby my back and build it up gradually. So, yeah, we will wobble in. Hey, games all day. Wicked squiggle. All right, so this the the lesson, if you go back and watch the VOD on this one, the lesson was that if you're going to mix like a mid-tone, you should then use a single color for your highlight and shadows. Whereas if you're if you're new to mixing, you should pick a mid-tone and then, you know, choose uh, have that single color and then mix your highlight and shadows. Essentially, you should try to use out of bottle paint if you're new to mixing to make it easier for yourself. So in this case, I wanted kind of a custom blonde color, so I started with Palomino Gold, which is a yellow ochre. It's a good color to start with. But you never want to start with a really, really bright yellow because it doesn't look natural. Um, and then I mixed a tiny bit of brown in it and I went with like a little bit of an orangey brown because I didn't want it to look too much like the skin tone here. And I didn't want it to look too much like these brown areas that are going to be non-metallic metal gold. So I wanted to keep it away from that MM gold. So I didn't want to use the same color to shade the hair that I did use to, to start the gold. So we had our Palomino gold. We mixed in just a little bit of Harvest Brown, tiny bit. And that's also the color that I'm using to shade the hair. So my colors look like base coat, shadow, that's Harvest Brown. It's a really pretty um, orangey rich brown. It's good Good as a highlighter for golds and yellows. Or shadow, sorry. Shadow for golds and yellows. Sorry, it's been a long stream. Uh, and then I just mix white with that to get this nice pale color, which is actually a lot like um, our Pathfinder colors, uh, Osirian Sand, which I, which I also used to mix this base color. So it was half and half these guys, and then a little touch of the brown. And normally, like, we have a blonde hair triad with Reaper Master Series. So, you know, you could just use that. Or you could choose another, like, mid mid-range starting color. Uh, Golden Blonde 9033 is a blonde hair color you could start with and then mix shadows and highlights for. Yeah, no crazy twisties in the yoga. I just, I did very scaled down yoga yesterday with David. It was mostly I just did the stretches and I did anything where I felt like I didn't need to twist my core. Um, but yeah, usually with, um, with blonde hair, uh, Wicked Squiggle, I just go for an ochre type of color. Something you might look for at on a lion or a cheetah or a leopard. You don't want to use anything too yellow. Something that's almost like a yellow tan. And if I have to mix that, then you can mix that by taking a yellow and adding some brown to it. And then adding, usually you want to add just a little bit of white to that too, because you want it lighter, right? If you're going to have blonde hair, it tends to be lighter colored, so it makes sense to add just a little bit of a white or an off-white. Alrighty, so there, there, there. This is looking pretty good back here. I do need to hit a little bit of light here on the part. You can see that I've got the shading because her arm's over her head, but I would have some highlights here too, so I'm going to grab my highlight color. Thanks, Wicked Squiggle. Yeah, you could do, um, I mean, like I said, Reaper does make a blonde hair triad if you want to do everything out of the bottle. I created their paint lines, so I know how to mix everything just from scratch or random other colors. Um, so I do like to put a little bit of mixing in the stream from time to time. But I also encourage people to just use out-of-the-bottle colors for at least one. Like, if you are if you start with an out-of-bottle color and then you mix your highlights and shadows, it makes it a lot easier for you when you're just starting out. Um, I did the opposite here, where I mixed my mid-tone and then I just used one color to both, you know, one color to shade and one color to highlight to keep it simple that way. And that's the other way you can do it. And really, the way you do it depends on the model and, you know, what your goal is for the model, what area you're working on what seems to make the most sense. I see a lot of people get into trouble where they start, they mix their first color and then they mix their shadow color off of that. And then they, you know, get really like into like uh, a lot of color interaction where the colors aren't working right and they're not sure why. And, um, and so, yeah, so I tend to try to simplify it. All right. It is time to look for a raid. I think we've got at least her basic shadows and color shadows and highlights a mid-tone of that hair the only thing i need to do now is pop some pure white into this because hair is shiny and its highest highlight should be either a pure white or very close to pure white so i could use pure white with a tiny touch of this if i wanted to um and uh, but because she is blonde i could get away with pure white here if i wanted to on on darker hair you uh that you often don't want to or medium or darker hair you may not want to use a pure white you may need to add a little bit of your brown or your whatever 
pure white on black hair does work because black hair tends to be very shiny. Um, but yeah, she's getting there. But yeah, she's a, this is a very simple, basic model. I mean, we did the see-through cloth on the legs and the torso here, which was fun. Um, so that's pretty much the advanced technique that she uses. Otherwise, we've been talking a lot about color theory because uh, she's got a lot of different colors on her. Um, I would count both the skin and her hair as a yellow. So your value were onto something when you say uh, that the skin and the hair look similar. So Canadian company is buying out UPS freight. Weird. Um, but yeah, so if you take the skin and the hair and consider that a yellow, then we've got blue and red. So she probably is a primary red, yellow, blue color scheme and the aqua would count as an accent because the pink technically counts as a red because it's a lightish red, even though it's got a lot of, uh, magenta in it. Magenta is just a cold red. It's not actually a purple. Um, we need to highlight this a bit more too. And up there, we still have a lot of highlights and stuff to do on her and I need to get her eyes done. I need to finish these little, figure out what color these little jewels are on her forehead and her navel. They might just be pearls. I may just go for white. It might be easy. Um, and we need to do the anime on her and stuff like that. And then we need to figure out what her basing is going to be like. But yeah, so we're, we made some progress here. I feel like she's coming along really well. I do like how the blue transparent cloth ended up. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed it. So yeah, today for Michael Collins, who likes me to recap, we worked on blonde hair. We talked about mixing your base color and then being very simplified with your highlight and shadow or vice versa, using a straight up color as your midtone and then mixing your highlight and shadow more complex in more complex manners, but trying to always kind of keep it as simple as you can with mixing and then using these blonde hair, these blonde hair colors. Yay. <laughs> All right, Justin, are you there? Justin, earth to Justin. Yeah. Houston, we have a, we have a ended stream. <laughs> we need a raid. Absolutely. We're going to be raiding uh, just Dysus. Oh, yay, Dysus. All right, cool. Say hello to Dysus, everybody. I'm going to go run to the grocery store because it looks like it's turned into a sunny day, so I may as well enjoy it. And I hope that you all had a great time. Bryce, I will tell David about your offer. I'll see. We'll see how dubiously he responds, but uh, but I'll, 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 I'll push him a little. I've been telling him he should think about skiing with all the snow that's about to get dumped. So, yeah, it was nice seeing you guys. I'm glad I'm back. I will see you again tomorrow morning. It's rock troll day. So we need to like work on basing and maybe we'll get down. We're mostly going to work on basing. I might do a little bit of other little details and touch ups on him. I don't know. I haven't decided. We'll find out. Tune in tomorrow for rock troll and you'll find out later. Thank you guys. So much. Have a great rest of your day. Don't forget. We have miniature Monday at 3 PM central time today. Um, outside of that, you guys have a fantastic, wonderful day and keep being awesome. <laughs>